Hello? 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 <laughs> Hello? Hi, welcome to the guest girl experience. Day number one of the reset. I'm glad to see that everybody in chat is having a gay old time. Welcome to the experience. Patient number Yonte Mickey. Patient number Ren Valia. Patient number Borch. And patient number Verskull. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the more baseline uh, parameters of the Gasparil experience. As you can see, my emotional support corn is over there in the bed. And I, your emotional support dog girl, am right here on the right side of the screen. And you, you're up there. How's it feel to be up there, chat? Does it feel good? I, I, I think it's good. See, I think it's a good, good thing to be. I mean, after all, you will say, you know, down here, right? On my level. Like, I could just, like, like, I could just, like, tuck you into bed. You want to go to bed, chat? There you go. See? I hope you enjoy your sleep. Oh, yeah, no, now you are hanging. <laughs> now you lurk? Lurk? Oh my gosh. Cat be lurking. Cat be smirking. Cat be going back up here. Boop. But yes, I don't really have a whole lot more to add to here. We'll come back to this area. Because I did promise you that there'd be a new design, but I figured I'd give you a little more treating before I get to the nice big stuff. So, obviously this is a character, but I've never really gone to death about or what makes this character. Tell me, chat. Are you interested in some deep guest burl lore? I think you're going to enjoy the guest bro. Right? Well then. Kill this for a second. Chat. I don't have to say anything for a bit. Because I get to take you over here. For your time. Thinking about the guest bro lore. Soon. Good evening, chat. Sit down. And let me tell you all about how the pup that you love came to be. One day, a sad puppy was sitting in a pen in a local animal shelter. Her ears darted up of excitement when she heard a woman was looking to adopt. The woman asked to see her and play with her. Falling in love with the puppy, she took her home. The two arrived back at the woman's house. The puppy explored the house, sniffing the plants, jumping on the couches, and even chewing on the baskets, much to her new owner's dismay. The woman told her to calm down and that she should come take a nap of her. The puppy gleefully trod and followed her owner into her bedroom. Later that day, the puppy woke up, her owner still soundly asleep. Wanting to explore some more, she tried to leave clumsily falling off the bed and onto the floor. Still wobbly, she tried to exit through the door, but instead bumped into her owner's nightstand. Her glasses fell off and landed squarely on the puppy's snow. The puppy was then confused when she started to see a mist and started to grow and ascend off the ground. Standing tall above the ground, the puppy looked herself over in the mirror to make sure that she was okay. However, things were different. There were no paws or toe beans. Instead, there were hands, feet, fingers, legs, arms, and even toes. 
She had a human body now, but she still had her puppy ears and puppy tail. She was startled, but absolutely excited. The woman woke up, startled by all the noise about the new girl in her room. She saw the tail and asked, Puppy? The dog girl barked in approval. The woman couldn't believe it. Her glasses had turned her new dog into her familiar. The dog girl scrambled for a few sounds before saying, Keep! Want keep! Like human! The woman used her magic to make a copy of her glasses and gave them to the dog girl. Now you can be a girl just like me, she said with excitement. We should get you dressed, though. Girls shouldn't be naked. Time passed, and the dog liked being a girl so much that her owner taught her how to eat, drink, dress, and even speak English. She still didn't have a name, though. Name? The puppy asked. The woman fought for a moment before saying, I'm not sure, but you're a good girl. The best girl, even. The puppy repeated confidently, I'm good girl. Guess girl. The woman giggled at her slip, but the puppy kept on saying, Guess girl. Guess girl. You are the guest girl, my guestie, she said. After being given a name, Gessie looked into her owner's office and asked, Screen? The woman explained, That's a computer. It can do anything. It can teach you, entertain you, you can do work on it, you can do anything on it. Gessie wagged her tail in excitement. When her owner left for work, she started to use the computer. She learned how to search on the internet. Wanting to repay her owner's kindness, she asked the internet how to make people smile. The internet told her to become a streamer in order to help people smile. Gessie came back to the computer each day, researching how to speak better and how to be a proper streamer. Today, she might even stream for you. And that's the tale of the dog that goes awoo. All right, welcome back, chat. Did you enjoy your programming? As I think you probably enjoyed your programming. Why, thank you. I too enjoy my backstory. It's not every day that I get to be intelligent after being a bit of a dippy dippy dog. Hee <laughs> hee. All right, so I did in fact promise a new outfit. So let me just work a little magic. Uh, woo! And, uh, woo! Alright. Now that's out of the way. They're clear. And, I can be. Can what? Why? The changing process, of course, after all. You think I'm gonna change on screen right here, right now, just for you, like this? No! I want a little privacy. Come on! Like, I think I'm just gonna change like that out there for you. That'd be so crass. Do that so crass. I think I'm ready. Let me just, uh... There? There, chat? I think I'm there. You? Whoa, look at that. Oh my god. I got- I got that Fred thread. And I got- I got that hair hair. My hair is actually, like, managed for once. I know, it's great. It's super awesome. <laughs> and then, like, look at me. 
Look at me. I'm just I'm just bouncing away, baby. Oh, I know. It gets better. It gets so much better. Hold on. I have I have I have more clothes too. Like let me just uh go over here for a second and then I can like, you know. Do that. Ooh, I get to have it in black too. Oh my god. It's just amazing. Right? And like Whoa. Hey, looky there. There. Not just in time, huh? I got them short shorts too. You call it night mode, I call it the correct way to stream. Alright. I don't need no sink and change in screen anymore. Good. Come on, corn. Come on, come a little closer for mommy. There you go. There you go, corn. I love corn so much. I really do. It is the greatest vegetable ever given to us on this beautiful. Alright, now before I go, I figured I might as well do something funny. I'm not going though, but we got more to learn. But of course, for everything that has to be learned, we all have to participate in degeneracy. I kicked the corn out of the bed. That's why I did. I kicked the corn out of the bed. You wanna know why? I'm going into bed with the best person in the world. You wanna know who that is? Myself. After all, if you don't love yourself, who do you love? So, I'm just gonna get a little bit snugglier of myself. Hi, me. Hi, me. How you doing? Uh, we're just going to, uh, go each other's company. Oh, come on. Don't be so dejected. I'm sorry. I, I'll I'll see other bedmates besides you. you. You knew this. You knew this. You can you can come into bed too. There we go. Two's company, but three is a very happy crowd. All right. Well, there's more to learn about the guestie. So, before I take you to a Q and A. Why don't I take you to a quiz? Do you? I say, do you know your guest pearl knowledge? I sure hope you studied. Because after all, baby, it's quiz time. Ah! Uh,
When you have so many things, sometimes things just don't want to work the way that you asked them to. But yes, I hope you enjoyed the quiz. How much did you know before we got to the Q&A? Did you know a lot? A little? Who knows? Only I would know. I was watching everybody in chat type away. Why don't I get a little bit a BGM going. Um, you know, just get something kind of simple and breezy. Oh, excuse me. I am feeling the pain so much right now. I ate Taco Bell. That was a mistake, baby. All right, welcome to the lounge. So obviously you got to learn a little bit about Guesty, but now you get to learn a little bit more about me, Guesty. So here's a quick about me. My name is Guesty, also sometimes known as Guest Burl. Now, I am, in human years, 28, but in dog years, that makes me four years old. Four. Can you count it? One, two, three, plus one equals four. I am 66 inches tall or 168 centimeters when I am a human, and I'm 21 inches tall, or 53 centimeters when I am a dog. Because sometimes the glasses fall off, and I just become a normal, normal dog. Can you imagine that? Maybe one day I'll actually turn to a dog on stream. That'd be <laughs> crazy, I know, right? Uh, anyways. Uh, I am a somewhat human female and also a dog. Um, that's just how it goes. My pronouns are she, her, and occasionally if you ask me a dog, I'll say they are Awu. Now obviously right now, I'm pretty much a human, but I'm a dog. I'm a border collie, baby. I am a very good dog. Hell yeah. As for what languages I can speak, um, 
I mostly just speak English. I've done a little bit of starting into German. Uh, enough to say. Hello. Ich liebe dich. Prost. Danke. Vielen Dank. As for my occupations outside of streaming, because right now I'm doing my occupation of streaming. Um, what is the German word for donut? I probably could. Uh, I mean, yeah, ich bin eine Krapfen. Aber ich bin eine Krapfenhundin. But yeah, I'm a streamer. But I'm also a musician. Aw, oh, you cheeky broad. Ich bin ein Berliner. Yeah. But I'm a musician. Uh, I've done plenty of gigging before this. I hope to get back into live gigging someday. That'd be very fun. But... As you can tell, besides this right now, because I am not getting into wanting to make, like, a long-form OST for this. But maybe if, like, eventually I get big enough to get, like, remixes of my music, that'd be, like, something I could play in the background. But everything else that you've heard so far, so the loading screen, um, the chatting screen, the lore video, <coughs> mm. And the quiz, all those OSTs, those are all babe, babe, <laughs> I can't speak, <laughs> made by me. Uh, otherwise, I live my life as a simple, humble woman and a philosopher. Am I a public philosopher? Hell no. I just try to live as virtuously as I possibly can. And I think that's all anybody can really ask of you. Um, now, that's just basic information, right? What do you need to know? What do I like? Well, this is a good start. For starters, it's really hard for me to say. Really, really hard. But I I guess I kind of like Emery Matsushita. Like, he's the co-worker I work with the most in Digibento. And I gotta say, as much of a pain in the arse as he is, I do enjoy his company. He's actually a very, very hard worker. I've known him for many years before VTubing Digibento. And honestly, I wouldn't say he's one of like, my best best friends, but like he's up there. Like I would take at least five bullets for Emery. No joke. I also like Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a stinky uh, children's trading card game that I spend way too much money on. Uh, we call that in the business being addicted to cardboard crack. Um, and I was decent enough at Yu-Gi-Oh! to get an invitation to qualifiers for 2020 uh, Nats before COVID made everything complicated in the matter. But you know what? I enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh! It's a very nice little strategy game for me to play. Um, otherwise, I enjoy myself some VTubers. I'm being a VTuber right now. I'm wearing a shirt with a VTuber on it right now. You're watching a VTuber right now. And you should be watching more VTubers right after this. Pick your poison. I don't care which VTuber you watch. Preferably, I hope you stay within Digibento. But you could always watch some of my favorites. Anyways... As alluded to in the quiz earlier, I do enjoy food and cooking. Food is just something that anybody can really get behind. And quite frankly, I like making food too. I go into different spells of what I make. I've been much more into just actually like cooking the past year and a half. Um, like, oh my god, I forgot to queue it up honestly. But like... Do I have a folder of it? I feel like I do. 
I do, yeah. So, like, I can just, like, do, like, a quick, like, example of stuff that I've made in the past. So, let me, um, like, get a quick little, like, idea of what's going on with that there. Hopefully this doesn't act silly. Oh, of course it wants to act silly. That's always the way it goes, isn't it? Alright, let me try to open it with something else. As I swear, I have pictures of food right here. You know what? That's fine. That's, that's good enough. I'll do it with Mozilla. Mozilla is always the killer. All right, so I'm just gonna move this here. You can kind of see uh, some of the stuff I made. I've made this nice little vodka pasta here with plenty of cheese. Um, I've also made what? No, come on, work with me, honey. Work for mommy. There we go. I've made this homemade beef stroganoff. It was nice and delicious. And then I've also made these nice scrambled eggs with melted cheese on them. Look at that. Look at how wholesome a breakfast that is. And if you want something more extravagant for breakfast, well, why don't you have a croque madame. I mean, just look at it. It's the best way to have a ham and cheese. You got ham, you got cheese, you got cheese on top of your bread, and you got egg on top of your cheese, on top of your bread, on top of your cheese, on top of your ham, on top of your bread, on top of your plate, on top of your mouth. Quite frankly, I think that's something to divinely die for. Now I know what you're thinking. Gasty. This is all just chump change. And you're right. It really is. So, why don't I show you a more large form thing that I have done. Let me just get this to... Go that way. Bloop. This is a dinner I made for Easter about half a year ago. Now, as you can see, there are brownies up there on the top right. That's chicken cordon bleu made with pepper jack cheese. Uh, there are steaks. This is uh, rosemary olive oil bread in the middle. Um, we have Cheddar Bay biscuits over here on the top left. And below those are candied bacon and white cheddar potato boats. And in the middle of all this, we have two pans of baked ziti with all the tomato sauce, mozzarella, and ricotta your little heart could ask for. Obviously, I've posted more to Twitter in the past while. I haven't compiled it into here. This is stuff I made more when I lived in my last location. But as you can kind of guess, I do enjoy cooking. And I am looking very much forward to making pretty good-sized meals for Thanksgiving and for... Christmas when that comes around here in the year. Okay, you can go. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye to the food window, everybody. Say bye-bye. Alright. Of course, what good is food if you don't have some favorites? And honestly, I love me some chocolate. Chocolate is just nice and soothing. It's just one of those foods that can never really do much wrong. Except for white chocolate. White chocolate is bollocks. And don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. You hear me? Oh, now, I love me some guitar and I love me some music. I really do. 
I am looking very much forward to when we get like a DI box so I can start using more of my real instruments when recording and creating and composing my OST for this channel. Um, but that's one of those things to stay tuned for, right? Because I would love to do guitar streams and karaoke streams. Um, otherwise, as most girls do, I enjoy my veritable gamut of stuffed animals. Um, now obviously I know what you're thinking. Stuffed animals? What are you, a loser? No. You're the loser. Like... Let me find it here. As I know it's here. Just hold tight with me for one second. I'm just looking through a very important DM with so many other good things in it. Are you even living if I haven't collected hundreds of stuffed animals? That's same. You always need the stuffies. Alright. So I lied. The food window's gone. But. We have this. Now these aren't all my plushies. But. You know. There's a lot to take in here. So, as you can see, we have some Nesso berries on top um, between me and my hubby. We got a Rem, we got a Hibiki, a Tai, uh, a Jalter, a Kaga. Down the middle here, we got some more traditional ones. Like, we got a Shark Hand puppet here. We got some Stingrays, a Moth, a Stegosaurus, a Fox. There's Mono from Persona 5 for some reason. There's a cheeseburger hiding in there too. And in the bottom row, we have some more Pokemon and stuff. There's a little Winnie the Pooh. And we got like three different Kirbys, because if you don't have Kirby in your collection, you don't have a friend. And quite frankly, I think you always need a friend. So the cops knew that internal affairs were setting up. Yes, they did. Uh, anyways, if there's one thing that girls love besides plushies, it's this. Power tools. I love power tools. They make me feel, well, powerful. I mean, after all, just listen to this baby purr. She stays on my desk every single night. And she's always there whenever I'm ready to do something. <coughs> now, besides stuffed animals, I just like animal animals. I've had plenty of pets over the years. Right now, I have a little stinky boy named Min. Uh, cute little cat, even if he's a little booger face. I've had dogs, like butters. Uh, my dad's dog, like Brady, uh, there's been like Coda, Bojangles, Teddy, Baby, there's been like seven different hamsters. Uh, there's Coco, who was my favorite cat in the world. Um, Peekaboo, who was another sweet cat. Kovu, um, we had like two or three guinea pigs, and... I don't know. It's always nice to have animals around the house. They're just nice little friends. I would love my own my own one though. Like I'm sharing mint with the hubby. Um, I always feel like I should branch out into getting more interesting pet for once though. So if I don't get a dog, I might just get something very offbeat. Like, you know, a, a, a tarantula or like a snake. Because tarantulas and snakes are kind of cool, you know? Like, they can get it. Pet alligator? Hell no, I've lived in Florida long enough to know that you don't want to pet crocodile or alligator. Um, but anyways. If there's one thing I love more than animals, it's my most favorite woman in the world. Your mom. Chat. I love your mom. 
If you ever... Yes. Well, thank you. I would love her to know that she's loved. If you ever wanted to have a nice, wholesome time, please send me her contact details to my DM inbox. Whether it be here on Twitch, Tumblr, Twitter. I would like to get to know your mother better. Oh, well that's very sweet of you, Dante. Anyways, to be a dork kid for a second, I grew up heavily on Lego and Bionicle. I'm trying to regale if I have that saved here. Hmm. My throat is being so unforgiving right now, you don't even know. Um, now, obviously, I can't spill every bean here, but I will say this. In a past life, I made plenty of Bionicle videos on YouTube, but this is like, gosh, 12 to 15 years ago. When Bionicle was more culturally relevant. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll show you some stills from those when I feel more ready to blur the line between every single identity. But for right now, I will say this. You give me some time with some bricks, I'll make you a nice dude. I will make you a nice dude. And finally, what kind of girl wouldn't be complete about loving some tokusatsu content? If you don't know what tokusatsu content is, we're talking your stuff like your common Riders, your Super Sentais, or in Americans' cases, Power Rangers. Um, I just love dorks in spandex suits that do a bunch of like live action stunts while fighting big giant monsters. It really gets me going. It really gets me going. Now, obviously, that's what I like. But here's the thing. What do I not like? Well, for starters, I don't like Emery Matsushita. I hate this booger face. Every single time I have to collab with him, I divorce him. I divorce him just every single time. He's just the worst. Like, have you ever tried to work with Emery Matsushita? He's awful. He's truly the worst, like, catboy being you could ever ask to be with. And yet I have to do, like, do this debut and, like, collaborate with him, like, all the time. I swear, one of these days, I'm going to, like, dig my own hole in the yard just to get away from him for a while. But if there's anything I hate more than Emery, it's Yu-Gi-Oh. I know I said I like Yu-Gi-Oh. I really did say I liked it. But quite frankly... For all the fun that it is, my god, this game is so mismanaged, and it's so infuriating. You have to be, like, an amateur legal student to play this game professionally. It's actually kind of infuriating. And sometimes you just get nanayed. Like, what? I became a control player for five minutes, was up in card advantage, and I lost to Super Poly? Them's the brakes, but, like... It's... God, the, the brakes are broken. But if you want to talk about broken brakes... Actually, I don't think I ever had the brakes installed. We can talk about my least favorite thing in this list. Capitalism. Now, I know. I beg and implore and plead all the time, asking for subscriptions and tips and donations. But that's just because I'm a hardworking artist here. But obviously, if you've read the news lately, well... The likes of this platform don't seem to really care much about the efforts of hardworking artists such as myself and others. And quite frankly, capitalism always rewards those who work the least hard. And those who put in the labor, they always get trampled through by the system. Quite frankly, chat, if you want to make this dog girl really happy, do your part today and overthrow your single worst proponent of capitalism in your community. All I'm saying is, you can't be radical unless you radicalize. Ooh, ooh. Oh, well thank you for the subscription, Julie. 
I really appreciate it. And of course, for as much as I love food, there are some foods I just hate. Um, like radishes. I just can't get into radishes. I've never really liked radishes in any form. Even in salads, they're just unbearable to me. And blue cheese, I'm sorry, I don't really care for it. I don't like it as a dressing. I don't like it as a compliment to hot wings. It's garbage. It's like the only cheese I actually hate. Why do I want moldy cheese? Do it look like I want moldy cheese? Hell no. <laughs> Not me. Of course, I like video games, but quite frankly, I don't like Smash. Or at least most of Smash. Like, I enjoy Brawl. I... I liked Smash 4, but Melee is a broken mess that seems to have a beloved cult fan base. And Ultimate, I kind of enjoyed for a bit. And then it became a cluster doodle of just DLC characters being broken and walking up the wazoo. And quite frankly, if there's anything I hate more than those about the base gameplay, it's about the communities that have cultivated for it on a professional level for both of these games. I'm not going to mince words too much. I'm just going to say this. For all of the interest that Smash professionals can bring into the genre of it as a competitive game, there are just as many, if not twice as many detractors and moments that make it seem like an absolute train wreck. Obviously, esports has never been a very clean competitive genre in regards to sports and gaming, but I feel like the worst annals of fighting games especially come out in Smash, mostly in Melee and Ultimate. And I just didn't like Ultimate that much as like a single player experience either. At least Melee has something to offer. I'm sorry, miss me with that World of Light garbage. Give me Subspace Emissary any day. Because World of Light is not a game. It's a pale form of an entertainment experience. But if you want a pale form, then we need to talk about one of the other proponents of capitalism that I'm mildly guilty of as a cardboard crack enthusiast, but I try not to be in many other aspects, and that would be gotcha and NFT. Now, obviously, the exploitability of the human condition through gotcha mechanics is something that is, quite frankly, pretty deplorable. I understand wanting to have things within your hobbies, but quite frankly, basically playing the lottery with shiny anime girl booby pictures is just not the way I like to go about it. And NFTs? Well, gosh dang it. You tell me you're gonna steal this art and make it be weird on like the environment and the capital system? Buddy. You're like... Worse than scum. You're like super scum. Like uber mcscumus. That's all I can say. And I guess if I can add this into right here now too, um, we have AI art. Now obviously there's going to be this very big moral and ethical debate on the validity of AI art within the artistic scene. And I can already tell you, this is no iRobot experience, okay? It's going to be decades before there's even any shred of validity to AI art being accepted as a serious thing in the artistic community because there's always going to be this grasp towards the human element and creative process. Um, that being said, the day where I see somebody use AI art as an NFT pool, I am probably just going to go like this. I'm going to grab my trash can. I'm going to emulate for a minute and just go like this. <coughs> Alright. Clearly, um... This mic input capture did not go the way I wanted to here. Blah. But that's fine. Um, you get the idea. It's going to make me vomit if I see NFTs. On okay, well, never mind. I get to have a date with the throne later. <laughs> um, now, I don't mind doing chores. And I don't mind vacuum cleaners that much, but as a dog, 
I am legally required to not like vacuum cleaners. They're loud. They're annoying. They're scary. They suck on things. They they suck on my skin. They take my blood. Wait. Maybe I have a leech instead of a vacuum cleaner, now that I think about it. I'll have to figure that one out later. Um, I don't know why I put this all the way down here. It's probably because it's very, very, very bleh. But, honestly, breakfast sausage is... Just not good. Like, why would I have a breakfast sausage? Like, I have a real sausage. Like, give me that nice, long, greasy, hot, Italian sausage any day. I swear I'm not horny for food. Um, especially on breakfast. Like, can you imagine all those nice greases getting into your eggs and just making them super juicy and succulent? You don't get that at breakfast sausage. Uh, breakfast sausage just doesn't get it. It's just like weenie sausage. Speaking of food, I don't like this drink in particular. It's Fresca. It's like a weird citrus soda. Um, you know what? Citrus sodas can be okay. I mean, Sprite's good and stuff, but like, Fresca, you know, that's not it. And I'm not one to really hate music per se. Even I can find some value in the parts of hip hop and such that I don't really care for. But hair metal, I just really cannot care for that much because it exacerbated and hyper accelerated the problem that was already become a problem at the end of progressive rock scene that insulated the idea and genesis of the punk scene and basically created this very big wave of sort of artistic integrity being invalidated within the popular music scene. Uh, hair metal, we're talking to bands like, you know, Poison, Enough Zenoth. Uh, rat. Like that stuff. Like all your one hit wonder 80s guitar super shred garbo garbo metals. That stuff. Like your mid to late 80s arena rock. Even if you want to throw it in there too, I would say Motley Crue. Just that stuff. It's honestly probably the one subgenre that rooted out of rock and roll that's probably the most artistically bankrupt half the time. And I know it's a very hot take. There's probably going to be metalheads in my comments at some point. They're probably going to eviscerate me. But you know what? I don't care. There's better metal. There's always been better metal. And I'm glad that for once... I mean... Uh, yeah, glam metal kind of falls into the subcategory of hair metal. But like, the thing about glam metal is like... Glam is like this extension of British like mod pop sort of diversity from like uh like glam rock that came out from that era like your t-rexes and stuff and that carried over more and some of it got uh construed and obstructed into the hair metal genre and while there are some overlaps oh yeah no metal fans would probably be mad at me for saying like i don't know i just thought injustice for all was okay not great, just okay. <laughs> and they'll probably get flamed for it. Um, but yeah. Why should I hate things when I can talk about video games I actually like? Because if I don't like Smash and Ultimate, what do I like? Well... Ah, oh, thank you, Tired. You're so fine, don't worry. Um, but yes, as you can tell, I love me some Mega Man Battle Network. It's probably my favorite franchise growing up as a wee lass. Um... I remember having at least every single cart once in some iteration between DS and GBA. It's just like mac and cheese for me. It's like comfort food gaming. Same with Banjo Kazooie. I remember renting this back from like the local like blockbusters and stuff. It's just a very good 3D platformer. Same Mario 64. I just love 3D platformers. It's like Cooper. I hope at some point. Um, I can emulate or try to capture Sly Cooper. Because, quite frankly, I think Sly Cooper really needs more love. And it's a franchise that I think kind of gets a little bit overlooked as like a streamable category. And quite frankly, I would love to play Sly Cooper for all y'all. Because there's some nice creative stuff in there. 
especially in the first two games. The third's okay, but like all the juices are really there in the free three games. It's like really nice. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, I enjoy probably about the first three entries. I didn't care much for four, but like the second and third games, those can get it. Same as Spyro. I went through the first three Spyro games on the stream a while ago, and Emery's actually doing that right now too. He's on You're the Dragon. Um, you know, they're very classic platforms with very cool soundtracks. We can talk about them more in a minute. Yeah, I wish Sly Cooper got released to something other than, like, PS3. Um, I like Halo. I like the campaigns. Obviously, it's evident by the fact that I did all the campaigns for, uh, 1, 2, 3, Reach, ODST, and 4 with Emery on my stream. I haven't gotten to 5, because I don't think 5 is really accessible. Because we just did Master Chief Collection, but I also heard it's not very good. And quite frankly, I'm not here to play games that are just not very good. Um... A game I want to get to at some point, once I get past all the other sci-fi shooters, is Bioshock. Now, I think Bioshock 2 is kind of mid, and Infinite's kind of mid, but just the atmosphere of what's going on in this weird post-Rand apocalypse and Rapture and Bioshock, I don't know, it's something that tickles my little science fiction loving heart very intimately. Um, a game I want to maybe play sometime, but I know it's probably not the best thing to stream until I get like a larger audience, just because it's not very captivating innately. If anything, it's probably something I would play more as like a background activity if I just do another chatting stream. Would be Ladder Quest. I what you're thinking. Guesty, what the hell is Ladder Quest? Well, Ladder Quest Grim's Journey is a nice little game I found on Steam. And it's basically a cute little game where you play as a Grim Reaper that commits to combat by using Scrabble tiles. You just spell words and you cause damage. It's a very fun game. I enjoy it. I enjoy Scrabble. I don't care about my 50-50 win record on chess, but I would love to actually get in Scrabble. It's on my bucket list to get a bingo in Scrabble. And if you don't know what a bingo in Scrabble is, it's basically where you're able to play all seven tiles from your hand to the board in one play. And it is worth, if I regale correctly, a 50 point bonus. And quite frankly, I want to be at least that smart and educated enough to achieve the hard to achieve known as a bingo in Scrabble. Of course, like many other degenerate weaves of my generation, I too kind of... I guess enjoy Persona. I mainly grew up on 3 and 4. Um, I have to finish 2 sometime, because it seems like a good game. And then 5 made me kind of fall out of love with the franchise, mostly for game quality and with the fandom as a large kind of evolving after that point. And there's always some tumultuous relationship between um, the popular... popular? Oh, what, what is there? <laughs> Oh, the popular uh, zeitgeist in Persona. Because it's one of those games that has, like, the rent effect, right? Like, it's this really captivating piece of art for its time period, mired with questionable representation of topics that it has yet to really grasp appropriately. Um, like, with Rent, um, obviously there's the somewhat questionable handling of the subtext of the AIDS epidemic and of uh, more gender diverse characters and I hope at some iteration we just get you know the irrefutable truth for like just 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 make Angel a trans woman please just make Angel a trans I'm begging you please just make Angel a trans woman Jesus Christ just Anyways, though, uh, Persona has the same issue, though. Either it needs some more formal rewrites to not be so weird, or it just kind of has to commit to the problems it kind of created with Kanji and Naoto's dungeons. But besides that, though, um, I was shaking, uh, like, the silverware and my mug that I have to take to the sink, because I'm a lazy bitch. Um, there's a lot to enjoy about those games, though. I really 
enjoy small town murder mystery stuff and be able to play it in video game form in a way that's also like an anime is something that I think makes Persona 4 really special. Um, and Persona 3 is sort of like, what if you made a Hot Topic philosophy book into a video game? And quite frankly, I'm all down for that. I mean, if you play Persona 3, I think besides like the dodginess of the combat system, depending on which version you play, I think it's probably the most solid, accessible, and dare I say high quality entry of the entire franchise. Miss me with, but Persona 5's so good, it's the best. I haven't played Royal, but I can tell you, Vanilla P5, disappointing. It just pandered way too hard. Um, but you know what RPG hasn't pandered at all yet? And I'm so glad that he's really getting this nice big popular rise. It's Tubby Fox. Now, Undertale is cool. It's always going to be cool. But honestly, I enjoy the darker undertones and just world building that come out of a more mature setting from Delta Room. And I cannot wait for Chapter 3. And I cannot also wait for an opportunity to get to play through Delta Rune on stream. Because I will tell you right now, every girl has some shitty little man that they love. And goddamn, Spamton P. Spamton, that is my shitty little man, okay? I, I love Spam. If somebody buys me the Spamton plush, I will like make them a moderator. I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. But yeah, uh, as you can tell, Persona is an anime game. So what we actually talk about, anime. Wow. Now, clearly, this list is a little old. I'm not super big into watching anime as often as I have before. But I will say, out of all the anime that I've watched, the one that still sticks with me is like a very great story and I'm waiting to see the end of is One Piece. Gosh, you're all wowing. I know One Piece always has its problems. There's always things you can dive into on it. But for what it's achieved out of the big powers shown in anime that have occurred, I think it probably has one of the best stories that's just been committed to the genre in general. And I just can't wait to see it finish. There's just a lot of great character creations and honestly, the buildup that comes out of that series is really good. There are arcs that just get pissed on that I enjoy, like Skypea. I don't care if it's a little bloated. There are great payoffs in there. And I don't think there's any better anime payoff I can think of in the last 20 years than watching the journey of Monkey D. Luffy all the way up to the tragedies that occur at Marineford. I know that sounds like a very mean thing to say, the tragedies at Marineford, but honestly, I've never been as shooken and as moved by like an anime arc as Marineford. I honestly think it's something that really needs to be committed to some sort of achievement log. Because quite frankly, it's really committed storytelling. Um, of course, I like shorter stuff too. Like, why should I be serious all the time when I can just enjoy me a good comedy like Spy Family? Now, I need to watch uh, the second season with a few people in here at some point, but I really enjoyed the first season. Now, the one thing I always find a little bit miffing about the anime experience, especially on a seasonal basis, is sometimes it just gets a bit lost in what it wants to accomplish. But Spy Family knows what it wants to go for. It's just going for pretty much classic comedy tropes and executing them effectively to the point where it knows what it wants to do. Now, as some of the people I've watched it with will say, there are a few instances where there is uh, anime bullshit trademark. And there is, but it's nowhere near as awful as some animes with their anime bullshit trademark. I'm just saying, if you've been on the fence on Spy Family, I think it's worth the watch. I think you'll have a good chuckle. I think it's worth your time. And of course, we can't talk about Power Shonen without talking about probably the most outlier but awesome Power Shonen. Because, yes, I know Dragon Balls and One Pieces and Naruto's, they all kind of rule the genre. But, gosh dang, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? 
just the heart and humor that comes out of that series is just so nice. Obviously, we all are going to have our favorite parts. Zavaudo! Tokyo Tomare! <laughs> but yeah, um, I for one am a very big uh, proponent of part four. Again, I am very much in love with small town murder mystery things. That's why I like Persona 4. That's why I like part four of JoJo's. That's why I love Twin Peaks. Tween? Twin Peaks. My tongue is just going everywhere right now. Just, if you get me a small town, a murder mystery, and some things to go on, I will love your show most likely. I'm just gonna put it that way. And just the creativity that comes out of the combat scenes in JoJo is just a very good thing to... Like what? Like, part four, right? You have, like, the fight against Highway Star. We're just, like, deconstructing things in the middle of the fight while trying to basically replicate speed. Like, that's crazy. Like, that's what I love about a Rocky. He can take something that's already in, like, the pop culture sphere at the time and then flip it on its head in such a way as to where it's basically been reinvented before it even needs a reinvention. Like, it's amazing what he can do with that sort of concept. And of course, I love me some world building. I need to rewatch it again. And I love me some sci fi. And I know it maybe doesn't get that much love. But for what it is, it's probably the most open and philosophical anime that I've watched. And that would be Kino no Tabe. Now, if you don't know what Kino no Tabe is, it's a show about. Um, I'm going to say, like, kind of like a gender and descript protagonist named Kino. Um, I usually just use they for them because honestly, they don't really ascribe to wanting to be masculine or feminine in any particular way. Like, they're probably one of the most classic era anime characters I think of that kind of fits like the non-binary about being like non-binary TM characters. Like, they're just existing and I like it. And they have a talking motorcycle named Hermes, and they just travel the countryside and basically explore different towns with different problems and kind of like tackle them on as an outsider vagabond with just like this solemn look. And quite frankly, I kind of enjoy that, honestly. You don't have this protagonist just trying to be brash and trying to take charge of any real situation. They kind of just interact and they take on what they have to by their own merits if it requires it of them it's probably the most normal experience you could ask for in an anime but i think that's something that anime is missing a lot of it's just having a normal experience in an adventure adventures don't have to be like big and grand and bursting the scale all the time as much as i love stuff like one piece sometimes it can just be nice and collected like it's almost like watching like a 90s sci-fi anthology kind of thing in a way like i'm not going to say it's exactly like the x-files in any particular way but it kind of has the same energy right where like you have outside of maybe like the overlying plot of the x-files you just have like a protagonist or two going to areas and figuring something out and interacting with it in ways that you know are a little bit offbeat like there's no like oople spookle stuff like there's actual just like intellect behind what they're doing and it's kind of nice just to watch like intelligent protagonists without anime bullshit going on in anime I think I lost what I was trying to say there but just please watch Kino no Tabe it's a good anime just watch the original please though I didn't really care much for the remake that kind of happened a few years ago but the original that can get it and speaking of originals i know this is probably the most controversial thing on here i liked evangelion and honestly i kind of like the original ending i think it has this like self-fulfilling philosophical touch to it that just makes it a bit more earnest than whatever end was kind of going for, even though I know it makes people butt hurt. But you know what? Evangelion's a classic for a reason. I would give it a shot. I really would. I mean, God. 
the dancing fight with the angel. Perfect. Now, I enjoy some horror. I'm probably going to binge this more. But... Yami Shibai is probably the one anime in here that I don't think anybody's really going to know about or talk about. And basically, it's roughly translate to dark feeder and it's just this nice show well nice is a keyword i guess as a descriptor in regards to quality um that just contains like japanese short horror stories in a rough animated form it's just nice digestible scary content and i like the presentation the graphics and visuals from it and quite frankly if you haven't given it a try i think you should uh, speaking of anime bullshit, obviously, I think we all know that the major problem with anime that I think is starting to teeter away just a little bit is the overblow of Isekai. But if I ever had to choose an Isekai, honestly, I'd probably choose Log Horizon. Just the political intellect, um, the adaptation to the new world that they're in, the circumstances. Log Horizon is probably one of the more captivating isekais you can watch out of the genre. Yeah, like, it really tried its best to make the other world a genuine world. Like, it really did. Plus, like, I don't care what I can say. I forget his name. But the cat pirate in there, like, he can get it. Like, Emery cannot get it, but that cat can get it. I still need to watch more of Log Horizon 2, and I think there's a Log Horizon 3rd that came out. Maybe I'll binge it at some point, but it's the only isekai I'm really interested in. And of course, every kind of alludes to me liking sort of post-apocalyptic stuff. I rewatched it with a friend not that long ago. Um, well, I say not that long ago, it was like almost a year ago, Jesus Christ. Um, but that'd be Komodo Friends. Obviously, you can tell, I'm a big proponent for Komodo Mimi. And Komodo Friends is just this nice cutesy show that has a darker background to it that doesn't try to shove itself in your face like other things do. It just makes it feel like you're actually like taking the world in and kind of like figuring out the same pace as the characters. And I like shows that can do that, that don't try to like pander at your intelligence like that like you can do that and you can pick up things the second time around too that make it more interesting like i know it's kind of looks like a qc kid show like a very bled budget but i think kimono friends is worth his time and way in gold but if you don't want cutesy kid stuff and you just want to shut off your brain i'm just gonna put it this way i have yet to finish cowboy bebop but gosh dang it I caught Cowboy Bebop for dummies when it was live on air. Space Dandy is such a good time. It is such a silly show. There is so many goofy things to love about it. I mean, I could spoil the ending of the series right now, and it probably still is the best thing I could ever think of that you could do in a show where you go off the wall with power. It's dumb. It's stupid. There's boob jokes, but gosh dang it. If I had to pick one cowboy bebop for dummy shows it's space dandy because <laughs> space dandy is just so fun and the last anime on my list is going to be tenari no sekikan which is also a little bit more of an unknown one half the time excuse me but it's just this nice collection of seven to eight minute shorts of this boy in class wasting time creating these elaborate adventures that this girl over imaginates on and it's just a beauty to watch just watching somebody goof off and having somebody else goof off on top of the goof off it's just girl i pulled by being autistic me but you are the girl being pulled listen I am the girl being pulled, but also, like, Tanari is pretty much autistic, and, like, I forget her name. She's voiced by Kana Hanazawa, um, the white-haired chick in there. But honestly, that is the chick you pull by being autistic. It's so good. It's just so good. Um, but yeah, that's enough anime. Why don't I talk to you about my favorite thing, music. Now, obviously, 
you know Emery. He is a skate punk, cater boy, catty cat, boo boo face. I am a prog rock loving dog for the most part. My favorite band ever, probably still is going to be this day, King Crimson. There are different periods I like more than others, but gosh dang it, the creativity of this band, and honestly the underratedness that they have in creating proto-metal, is really, really good. I'm just saying, I don't think you've really lived until you've listened to Lark's Tongue and Aspic as an album, or even Discipline. I think you should give those albums a shot. Another of the big uh, prog bands I love is Yes. Now obviously, they kind of suffer from the trope where they kind of got big and bloated and kept on going and going and going. I mean, what? I can basically describe Yes to you within like two minutes. So there's this band, right? And then they make some albums. And then they get this like lineup going and it's pretty good. And then they get overblown and bloated and the stage production gets more obnoxious and the albums get more obnoxious. The point is like, wait a minute, it's 1973. We have a double-sided album with four 20 minute long tracks on it. And we have like super elaborate stage shows gonna be reconnected again by like YouTube in like 20 years. And it just keeps on going and going to the point where like they kind of have this weird like peter out period in like the late 70s where they're trying to go proto-punk but it doesn't work. And then they break up. And then there was this thing where they tried to be with like Led Zeppelin and it didn't work because Led Zeppelin also broke up so they're trying to make a new band. But then they made like a recreation of the band in like the West Coast where they have Trevor Raven who later went on to be like a fairly successful like mid to late 90s film composer. Um, they made like a more like arena rock version of Yes, and then you had like the old Yes with other members reunite, so then you had two Yeses at the same time, and then in 1991, both those Yeses did like a ha boom, and then you had this really obnoxiously bad album and like this huge tour for like a year and a half, and then this band kept on making like mid as hell albums until like 2001, and then they just kind of stopped making albums for a while. Um, also there was a point where they had the Buggles in there, you know, those people that made videos that really started. They had them in there like multiple times, even back again like 2010. Uh, I'm just saying, Yes is a very long story band, and I know their albums are not going to be good, but concern it. There are some good ones in there, like Close to the Edge, the Yes album, Fragile, Relayer. If I had to pick a favorite basis, Chris Squire of Yes would be up there. Just, oh, some of his lines are just so raw and good for what they are in progressive rock. It's great. But another basis that I really love that I've been learning to appreciate more is probably Mike Rutherford of Genesis. Genesis is another band that kind of suffered from the same fate as Yes, except they had a bit more success because they leaned in better to their selling out. Um, they're like this nice prog rock band that probably has my favorite concept album of all time in the form of The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. And this band is famous for creating two pretty good uh, progressive pop slash adult oriented pop uh, f like vocal figures in Peter Gabriel and in Phil Collins. Now obviously they're two different eras. You had the Peter Gabriel era that has the more classic albums up until his departure in 1975-ish. And then you have Phil Collins taking over the helm, but even some of the early like Collins-led albums are still good, like Wind and Wuthering and Trick the Tail are some of my favorites in the catalog. And then you have the pop era where it just basically turns into like Phil Collins light and this kind of is what it is. But you know what band isn't just is what it is? God, give it up to the Canadians every once in a while. We're talking Rush, baby. Getty Lee can get it. Alex Lifeson can get it. Neil Peart can get it. Rush can get it. I know this sounds like a very silly Paul Rudd joke, but it's not. Rush is a good band. I would probably start from, like, probably 2112 if you want to explore the catalog chronologically. But there are a lot of good albums in there. And the thing is, they have this knack for wanting to change with the times in this organic way that makes it so like they have these really cool like stylistic immersions into their eras 
like there's this huge like synth rock lean in like the mid to late 80s versus what they had going on with like the more prog rock lean in like the mid to late 70s and then you have like this almost like alternative rock take going on that's still like it's kind of raw as hell in like the mid 90s it's just something that i can really appreciate a band that knows how to organically change over the times without feeling like they ever truly sold out that's something great about Rush. But speaking about the 90s, if I had to pick one band from the 90s that I really, really do enjoy, it's Soundgarden. Oh my god, this band is so good. Every day I wake up and I cry myself to sleep again because I can't be Chris Cornell vocally. Chris Cornell probably has one of the greatest voices you could ever ask for in a rock slash metal context. It's just so good. I don't care if the lyrics are sometimes corny as hell. The delivery on this man is amazing. Plus, there are just these underrated, like, colors and time mix signatures that come out of Soundgarden for a grunge band of all things that almost make it borderline pseudo-progressive that just make it really nice. Just, if I had to recommend an album, please go check out, like, Bad Motorfinger or even Super Unknown. They're both classics of 90s rock and metal, and there are some heavy, heavy tracks in there. And sometimes you'll be brooding in this way that you never thought you could brood before. It's not this dark brooding, it's just this solemn brooding. That's the thing I like about Chris Cornell. Behind all this passion and flair and rage, there's a solemnity to him that I can really appreciate. But... That's kind of leaning way too hard on high art stuff. If you just want something fun but expressive, I know they probably don't get talked about a lot, and they're a band I've kind of fallen in love with the past few years, but that is The Band Apart. The Band Apart is this J-rock band that kind of is maybe like a little bit of like jam bandy style stuff, but it's mostly just like this nice hybrid like jazz pop kind of thing with like funk guitar stuff. And they just play like a lot of nice good parts to it and it's just a fun time all around. Just, I can't pick any one album or song that I like from The Band Apart. You're just gonna have to dive into it and trust me, I'm gonna tell you right now. The Band Apart is good. But a band that I can recommend albums on is The Police. Now, I know what you're thinking. This girl likes The Police? What kind of girl admits to liking the police in the year 2022? Well, I'm not talking about the law enforcement. I'm talking about the band that has Sting and Andy Summers and Stuart Copeland. Uh, Stuart Copeland who made the Spyro soundtracks on the PS1 and Sting who is Sting because Sting is Sting. Um, this band, I still think this again as much love as it deserves, even though it was a huge pop cultural powerhouse in the early 80s. And there are still tracks to this day that just capture the interest of people like synchronicity is just a great album ghost in the machine is pretty good uh zenyata mandata is also a good album as well like if you haven't get a release album a listen i would listen to one of the last three that they made pick anyone and you'll probably have a good time with what you hear of course as much as i love serious art music and stuff you gotta have your chucklehead picks and gosh darn it I love me some Neil Cicerega and some Weird Al Yankovic. What good is music if you can't laugh with it? Neil knows how to make a good comedy album with very good mashups. I don't know if I enjoyed the last Mouth album as much as the other ones, but that third Mouth album, that's art. That is actual art. And then Weird Al, well Weird Al is Weird Al, you know about Weird Al. I mean hell, you have another Weird Al film to know about more about Weird Al. And I don't know why I'm destroying my hairbrush right now. I'm picking like every single fiber. I'm going to destroy this from the end of the stream. This is what you get when you're autistic kids. You're just going to destroy all your shit. But yes, I love me some Neil. I love me some Weird Al. I love to laugh at stuff. I love a good parody. I love a good mashup. It's all a good time if you can laugh while you vibe. But speaking of vibing though, one of the bands that's very influential to me and just kind of the pop cultural scene in general is the Grateful Dead. They pretty much trailblazed jam rock and even just like this merchandisable cult following kind of thing in rock and roll. I mean, you still have iconography to this day, like the Dancing Bears and the Steal Your Face Soul that just kind of permeate past the music as this very marketable thing. But 
Even the music itself is very nice and expressive. I need to go back on the Internet Archive sometime and listen to more of the long-form versions recorded live of certain tracks. Because they can just go many places and they can go to other songs in other places. And it's just great. I wouldn't recommend listening to the studio albums that much because that's not what the experience is really about. But if you ever decide you want to listen to The Grateful Dead, just find a night. Find a show. Just put it on. Give it a chance to breathe at you. And you'll feel like the most closest thing you can have to like improvisational art in rock. It's very nice. Um, but speaking of art though, we should probably talk about Radiohead. I'm not going to say I love every album by Radiohead. There are some I just don't really care for. But the moods and emotions that are elicited out of the collective of Tom York and Friends is something that I think kind of speaks to the human condition in a way. The songwriting's great. The instrumentation work is great. Tronny Greenwood can get it. And honestly, if you haven't listened to OK Computer, I don't know what's wrong with you. Lastly, speaking of amazing albums, I know nobody really knows who the New Radicals are, even though they probably know who the New Radicals are. They created the song, You Get What You Give, which you probably heard in films before, but maybe you've been brainwashed too, but The New Radicals is probably one of the greatest pop albums I've ever heard. I would give it a listen if you haven't. There's a lot of good songwriting there, and clearly Greg Alexander has a career for writing pop music because he still writes it to this day, I think, for other artists. Maybe not to the degree for some people that we know on the pop charts, like how Pink and Linda Perry of Four Non Blondes um, affect like other pop cultural pop artists to this day. But like the work that Greg Alexander put into not only this band, but also into like other pop artists and just into the scene in general for how strong his talent is and for how much he really didn't like being on stage. He's talented, and nobody can deny that of him. Now, lastly, that's all we need to know about what I know. Um, so, if you ever want to find things out, you can always go over here to the other places. So, I'm going to advertise for a moment. So, obviously, like any VTuber, I have my own branding. My emblem is going to be two doggy paws, as is evident on my Twitter. Now, if you ever want to try to at me at things, I'm going to try to make these work. Um, you can just, you know, hashtag guestbrill me, and I'll probably take note of it. If you want to create um, art of me, uh, you can do so, and I would like to start the guest sketch tag, just to keep that in a nice collective, because I think that's probably the most effective way I could articulate guesty based art. Um, of course, you can always give me the guest memes because they're the guest memes and the best memes. But I'm just going to say, I'm not going to say I'm very say-so. So if you ever want to make some not safe for work art of me, please tag it under guesty gone wild. And of course, what good is a fan base without a name? You already know what it is, but all my guesties are guesties. Now, I'm guesty without a you, but you, you are the guesties with a you. Another few links here, like my Twitter, twitter.com slash and my Tumblr, deargasperl.tumblr.com, but I think I'll get a bigger earful out of that in a few moments. <laughs> I guess you gone well. <laughs> this isn't on Google. Ball. I knew you're right. Um, but yeah. So, I need to use the bathroom. So, I am going to do that real quickly. But while that is happening, um, let me get you into a feedy feed. Because I can't leave you alone for too long. Uh, Alright. I don't believe I made this one. So let me clean the slate for a second. It's going to get dark, chat. I promise that.
Oh my gosh, that was such a good bathroom break, wasn't it, chat? A woo, a woo ga! <laughs> Alright, no, it's fine, it's fine, those emotes can stay. This is just an outfit and hairstyle change. It's not like I changed species or anything. That's for another update. <laughs> but anyways, though, I am glad you're enjoying the Gasparil experience so far. Now, there's something I did forget to do yesterday, because it's a little quiet, but I feel like we have enough people now. You've gotten to know a lot about me, but I want to get to know more about you. Who is the girl next to my corn? Oh, well, Taser. That's the best part. I sleep with myself. Who better to sleep with than yourself? I am an absolute goddess. Every night. So, well, I'm not going to talk to you directly. I figure some of you probably submit to the inbox. You know what time it is. It's your favorite time. It's time. Dear Gasty. Absolutely time for Dear Gasty. Alrighty then. Let's go and see what we have in the inbox today. All right. Here, I'm looking here. Have to. Oh, that was vehement. Here we go. This one's an okay question. Uh, Anonymous asks today on Dear Gusty. Dear Gusty, tomato. How did you pronounce it? Tomato. 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 Yo, Emo. Wow. To wo wo wo. Oh, tomato. Tomato. Tomatosis. Tomato. Mystic tomato. Crash. Rock F. Shooter Sangan. Resp? No resp? Okay, that's enough. I'm probably gonna cover a strike. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm more inclined to say tomato. Like, tomato is like the most Gordon Ramsay thing you can say ever. Like, no, you need to know your tomato. Like, sorry, I can't be Gordon Ramsay. That's just not my lifestyle. I'm here to go, oh, woo! Not go, oh, woo. All right, let me take a better question than that. Because that was just low hanging fruit. All right. The movie's gonna be an isekai. Oh, Bud Rucker's me. All right. Let's see. Anonymous is asking today Dear Gusty, do you think that NASA is utilizing girl power by rocketing stuff into asteroids in an attempt to divert them away from Earth? Well, um, no, actually. I do not think that NASA is utilizing girl power by rocketing stuff into asteroids in an attempt to divert them away from Earth. Fixing problems with violence and shoving them to somebody else's domain is not a girl power thing. That is a brute force man thing. Only a lazy, slovenly man would ever try to do that. A girl boss like myself would talk nicely to the asteroids, make friends with it, and tell it to simply orbit the Earth in such a way as to where it does not cause an issue. Because that's the girl boss thing to do. Make friends with your enemies. Just pushing your enemies somewhere else? That's a very neglectful thing that requires a therapist to counsel and console, quite frankly. The damage done to the asteroid within this plan is something I can never forgive. That asteroid is going to be having psychological issues for the next decade and a half. It's probably going to have daddy issues. Do you want an asteroid with daddy issues? That's what I thought. Nobody wants an asteroid with daddy issues. 
Exactly, another moon be fine. All right. Let's see. All right. Anonymous asks, Dear Guesty, can there ever be love and peace between a cat boy skater girl and a prog rock dog girl? Evident by the fact that there is a divorce counter that still has a marginally large size, as well as the fact that I tried to comedically rescind my marriage proposal to Emery Matsushita on stream, I can tell you right now, there can never be love and peace. Not in the long term. Only for short stints. I can only tolerate Emery so much. But asking me to commit to love and peace with Emery? Well, that's just asking too much. That's like a hate crime to me. Cats and dogs only like each other so much. You really only can. Like, what? You think I just stay up every night thinking about Emery and like the way he smells like pizza rolls? Or how I want to wear his hoodie? Or how I wish he kick flip off my back the same way he kick flips off of skateboard ramps? Or how I wish he spent more time with me in our apartment? Or how maybe for once he should probably try to like, you know, make dinner instead of me making the dinner? Yeah, maybe I do like Emery. Nah! <laughs> I don't like Emery. Emery's a stink fuck. Alright. Let's see. Last question here. Anonymous is asking, Dear Guesty, are you no stranger to love? If so, do you know the rules? And if so to that, is a full commitment what you're thinking of? Lastly, would I get this from any other girl? Well, Anon, I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. I gotta make you understand that I'm never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and desert you, never gonna make you cry, never gonna say goodbye, never gonna tell a lie and hurt you. But anyways though, uh, for the record, nah, you really can't get this from any other girl. Like, what am I supposed to tell you? The guesty experience is guesties and guesties alone. I only provide it to you because I take pity on you feeble mortal humans. <laughs> but clearly, I guess you're pretty cute for feeble mortal humans. But that is enough for dear guesty. Now, that's really all that I have planned for tonight. So, I hope you enjoyed your time here, and you learned as much about me as I did about you. And I hope you enjoyed the new look. I thought this was a Gus Frill stream, what's a Rick Assey music video? I mean, listen, that was just practice for the karaoke stream. I did not eat 100 pounds of cheese, thank you very much. I'm still going for the 2 pounds of cheese in my fridge, Taser, just like- Stop boring me! Anyways. Normally, you're used to me just, you know, slinging links at you left and right at this point. And I can tell you, I got smart. I got better. I got NPR tier. Baby, we have an outro screen. And by God, I'm going to subject you to it. Why should I have to tell you about the credits? When I can go to another screen, pre record it, and tell you about the credits. So, that's it for the Gusty debut experience. I hope you enjoyed your time here. I hope you're ready to go a woo. And you'll out Myro? Oh god, that sounds kind of scandalous. I'm just gonna jump away before things get worse. Anyways. A woo and Abin and our beta Zane. Let me take you to the credit screen. Bye bye, chat. Hello, thank you for tuning in to the Guest Girl Experience. I hope you enjoyed your time here tonight. If you liked what you watched, please feel free to follow or subscribe to my channel. Tips are also appreciated. If you would like to keep in the loop, or just check out more of my content, please check out the following links below. 
you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash guestborough. You can find me on Twitter on twitter.com slash guestborough. If you want to ask questions for the Dear Guessy segment, anonymously of course, you can ask away to your heart's content at deargasperl.tumblr.com. If you ever want to check out the original soundtrack to these live streams, you can do so over on my Bandcamp at guestborough.bandcamp.com. If you just want to keep up to date with the rest of the community, or keep up to date with schedules, memes, clips, or anything else related, you can go ahead and join the Discord linked below. If you want a more edited and focused guesty experience, head on down to the YouTube link below. Finally, I am a member of Digibento, a small collective of VTubers featuring such talents as myself, Guest Pearl, Emery Matsushita, Hachi Katsune aka B, and Squid Hominid. If you're ever curious to see more of that content, you always head over to twitter.com slash digi underscore bento. Lastly, I can't provide the guest barrel experience alone, so special shoutouts to Munchroom, Less Than Kona, Warch, and Antagonist Chan for all the effort that they put into this channel. I've been glad to make your acquaintance, and I bid a woo a good night. Thank you for watching. Just remember, chat, I'm always watching you. Always watching. Awu. Just remember, I am always watching. And just as magic can bless, so can magic corrupt. But I'm sure this information will be relevant another time. Truly for now, I must say goodbye. <laughs>